Do not become a real estate investor if you cannot handle the following things. And these were some of the things that I overcame from being a struggling real estate investor to the point where I'm at right now, where I'm financially free and make a full-time income just from real estate investing alone. So if you wanna learn how to do that, watch the rest of this video. The first thing to know is that as a new real estate investor, you're not gonna be getting consistent paychecks whatsoever. In fact, you might be losing money. Now, eventually, you'll get to a point where you'll have flips going on, you'll have rentals, you'll have different projects and things going on where it does become consistent and you have deals closing every month or two um, or every week or so. But when you're getting started, you might go six to 12 months without making any money whatsoever. And not only that, but you'll probably be down some money because you know, you're spending money on marketing and different business expenses. So you need to be able to handle that. I, I was just talking with a guy, and I think he was a government contractor, and he was saying you know, he makes like six figures per year, he sends out one email per day, and he leaves at like two o'clock. Uh, so if that's something uh, you, know, you wanna do, go, go for that. But as a real estate investor, that is not at all what it's like. You will have to build up some savings or just maybe just keep your full-time job and do this part-time while you're getting started. And eventually what will happen is, you know, you'll put your first deal together and you'll do your second and third. And eventually, you know, you'll repeat what you did to get those deals. And eventually you'll become more savvier. You'll have more deals closing. You'll have bigger deals closing and you can build up some type of consistency. Um, some additional things you should do is, you know, I, I started a YouTube channel. It helps me, you know, it, it brings in revenue every single month. So it's almost like a rental property. And not only that, but you should also have rental properties themselves because that can provide a significant source of income, especially if you're buying like multifamily apartment buildings. So in between the different flips, I have my YouTube, I have rentals, I have different things going on. So that can help supplement uh, the income when you're getting started. The second thing to know is that you should not become a real estate investor if you can't handle rejection and criticism because there will be a lot of it, I can guarantee you of that. You're gonna have a lot of offers turned down. You're gonna get beat out by other investors just when you thought you had this property under contract. You're planning it out. Uh, you might have a seller that backs out of a deal and you have to go after them. Um, so you're gonna have to be comfortable with that. And before you even make an offer, you're gonna have to sort through tons and tons of leads. I mean, sometimes I'll send out 10,000 postcards just to purchase one property. Uh, so it's not like being a real estate agent where you talk to your neighbor, they wanna sell their house and boom, you know, you have your first deal. It, you gotta be, it's, it's much more selective. It goes through, like to find a really good real estate investment deal, you know, you have to find something that's just, there's, a, there's an inefficiency in the market and you have to be able to spot that. So you're gonna have to look through a lot of different properties, go through a lot of rejections to really find that one amazing deal. Now that one amazing deal can be completely life-changing and, and literally set you up for life if you buy the right deal. Um, but you will have to go through a lot of deals. And in terms of criticism, you're gonna have people from every aspect of, of life giving you pretty much bad advice on real estate investing. Uh, you're gonna have agents tell you that deals, you know, there's no more deals out there. You're gonna have other people tell you, you know, you should get a normal job. People are gonna say what you're doing is a scam because it doesn't conform to their nine to five idea of what an actual office job is. You're basically gonna have to put on the blinders and just focus in on finding deals. And my channel has a ton of information on, on how to find deals. Uh, but you're you're gonna have more criticism than you've probably ever experienced in any type of uh, career or endeavor. Because you'll also have like sellers yelling at you sometimes and cussing you out. You know, when you send out 10,000 postcards, believe me, you get some, uh, some interesting responses. Uh, but eventually what happens is you just kind of like get numb to it. And you just, you know, when you, you're just all about finding deals. When you find a good deal, it's the best feeling in the world. So all that other stuff doesn't even matter. But I remember, you know, first getting started in real estate investing and, you know, really going like six months without any deals, spending probably $10,000 on marketing. So I've, I've not only have I not made money, but I've lost money. People are laughing at me. People are saying it doesn't work. And, and as far as you know, at that point, you're like, they're correct. So you really have to like dig down deep and, you know, stay, stay the course and keep marketing, keep finding deals and, and you know, follow a mentor. The third thing I want to talk about is if you don't have reserves, you should not become a real estate investor. And by reserves, I mean like cash, credit, access to capital, because you will be over budget sometimes. And when you're getting started as a real estate investor, like I, trust me, I didn't have any reserves either. However, you need to build those up as quickly as possible. And that's why actually having a job can help because if you have a steady income, you can increase your credit lines, you can ask, ask your local bank for just a personal line of credit. Uh, you need to expand your credit as much as possible because in real estate investing, 
it, it, it's happened to literally everyone. You're going to be over budget on a project. I was over budget a hundred thousand dollars on, on a deal one time and I still made money on that deal. But, um, how many of you would be able to get through a deal where you accidentally like underestimated the cost by a hundred grand that could sink a lot of people. Fortunately, I built when my credit was really good. I built up you know, as much credit reserves as I could, not to spend it on Ferraris and whatnot, but just to have that uh, access to that type of capital. And the important thing to know about building reserves is you wanna do it when, when you don't need it. So you wanna extend your credit line, save up as much cash as possible, obviously, because there's gonna be a point where you are stretched out. And when you're completely stretched out, you're not going to be able to access capital. No one's gonna give you a loan or anything like that. So that's why you really need to have you know, a safety net there uh, for your different projects. And not only that, but there might be a good buying opportunity. So I have plenty of different lines of credit. I have a home equity line of credit. I have personal lines of credit. So if there was an amazing buying opportunity, I actually just purchased a property that was a pretty good buying opportunity. I was able to access that line of credit to purchase that. So I didn't have to take out a loan or anything like that. And it, it was a pretty significant amount. A lot of people probably wouldn't have been able to bring like fifty dollars or $60,000 to the table just to be able to close on this deal in a week. So there's really two reasons uh, you know, to have access to those reserves. Next up, do not become a real estate investor if you don't have patience. Investing is one of those things where you can't just jump on every single deal. You would be so broke, it would you would be bankrupt if you jumped on every single deal that someone said was a good deal. Because you'll have agents, wholesalers, different investors, they all say it's a good deal. But you have to be like super selective with the deals that you purchase so that even if everything went wrong with that deal, you would still make a profit. I know some investors, and, and really they're kind of like big name investors. If I said their name, you'd probably know them. Um, where they didn't even do their first deal for like six to 12 months when they were getting started. So like a lot of people get discouraged if they can't find a deal after like a week. But I mean, there's literally investors that went an entire year looking for deals and couldn't put anything together. But then once you're able to do that first deal, then you just kind of repeat, you know, the steps you did to find that one and over and over again. And every single deal, you know, you get a little bit better. Something interesting about Warren Buffett is that he, he's all about like waiting for that great deal. Like he'll go like years without actually buying any types of stocks. And then once he sees a great buying opportunity, he'll jump all over it and invest like billions of dollars. So I think he went like seven years without buying one stock. And all he does is analyze stocks all day because he thought all of them were overvalued, which um, if, if he says they were overvalued, they, they probably were. So you don't need to wait seven years to purchase a deal, but you should be very selective. Like myself, I have a minimum of criteria. Like depending on the deal for the most part, I need to make a minimum of 50000 relatively easily. If it doesn't meet that criteria, I'm not going to purchase it. There's always exceptions here and there, but you should have some type of criteria like that and really evaluate at least like 25, 50, maybe even 100 deals before you purchase that one. Next up, do not become a real estate investor if you can't handle risk. Real estate investing is risky. Now, there's ways to do it where it's less risky. For example, the, the best way is just to purchase a property at such a low price because you've done your marketing correctly and you've evaluated your deals correctly where of the last 10 deals, yours is probably the lowest. You know, of the last 10 properties that have sold on the MLS or in that area, yours is the lowest. That's how you build in a lot of forgiveness so that if, if something comes up, because uh, there's, there's so many risks with real estate investing. I've had shootings at properties. I've had evictions, lawsuits. I had a wall collapse. I've had so many different things you can't, you can't even imagine. Uh, so there's always going to be some level of risk. And the way to mitigate that is just to purchase it at such a low price and obviously get insurance and everything like that. Uh, where if something does come up, you're prepared for it and you can handle it and you can take care of it. If you can overcome those five things, you know, not having a steady paycheck, having risk involved, being patient, being able to handle rejection and criticism, having reserves. If you overcome those five things, you will be able to become a successful real estate investor. You can do this as a full-time job. So thanks for watching this video and watch this video right here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.